It's truly a man's world when the brutal confines of a prison or the torture of a forced labor camp becomes the setting of a sexy, catfight-fueled romp of naked flesh and violent revenge. Without a hint of apology, these male chauvinist fantasies grabbed an audience by the wrist and forced them to submit. It's the era of women in prison films, this time on Missing Real. Exploitation filmmakers have long had an infatuation with the concept of women behind bars. It's only the motivation and focus that have changed over the years. In the 1930s and 40s, women in prison films were simple character portraits, which examined the dangers of a misspent life. But with the rise of men's pulp magazines in the 50s and 60s, and the surge of drive-in and exploitation films, it wasn't long before those tired melodramas became salacious male chauvinist fantasies. In 1969, Italian director Jesus Franco found the formula that rang box office registers across the globe. Never one to pass on a great genre, B-movie impresario Roger Corman began a trend in women in prison films by shooting on location in the jungles of the Philippines. The result was 1971's The Big Dollhouse. Women locked behind walls of concrete and steel, guarded by barbed wire and guns in a tropical hell. They call it The Big Dollhouse. There's nothing they wouldn't do for a man or to him. You won't die from this bullet, Harry, but you'll wish you had. The Big Dollhouse starred Pam Greer and was directed by Jack Hill, a pair that would find success later in the decade with the black exploitation classic Coffee. In 1973, a young director employed by Roger Corman was charged with making his own women in prison film. Jonathan Demme, who would later win an Oscar for directing Silence of the Lambs, made his directorial debut with Caged Heat. Enter the female jungle of women's prison, USA. A seething hell of steel and stone where bodies behind bars ache with hunger for a man, any man. The Italians took influence from the pulp magazines of the 40s and incorporated the most sadistic menace they could imagine. Love Camp 7 began the unnerving subgenre of Nazi exploitation, and with it a brutal sexual violence. This violence was never more graphically on display than in a series of movies featuring a perverse Nazi prison camp warden named Ilsa. Another popular subgenre of women in prison films were set on forced labor plantations, where the prison uniform was almost always jean shorts and a tube top. These films followed Roger Corman's earlier lead and were filmed on location in the Philippines, allowing for spectacular jungle settings for pennies on the dollar. It's only because you don't understand how far my proposal extends. Oh, I can see how far it extends. Their world of plantation, the battleground, a tropical inferno. She can cut any man down to size. Listen to me, we can take this place, let's go! Warm hands, cold trigger, blazing death. An epidemic of machine gun madness. 38 caliber kittens spitting death as they claw their way to freedom. Nothing can hold her. Not chains, not bars for men. Sweet sugar. The genre of women in prison films continued to be popular with audiences through the 1980s with films like Women's Prison Massacre. In the 1990s with movies like Chained Heat 2. 
and even in the new millennium with a brilliant parody, Sugarbox. Part action movie, part softcore fetish film, and unavoidably polarizing. The women in prison genre of the grindhouse era ushered a generation of young men into adulthood and turned controversy into cash. <laughs> 